So a lot of you already know that I've been doing a lot of self-work, a lot of um, growing as a person, and with that comes uncovering a lot of a lot of things in my childhood, a lot of trauma in my childhood that makes me act certain ways in my adulthood. Ways that I was going against myself and ways that I was conditioned and raised was like, a, per a perfect example is when I would starve myself when I knew I was hungry, which led into something more serious, which is an eating disorder. Or when I would stay in a relationship when I knew it wasn't right for me. And I was recently talking with a friend who I, I care deeply about and I consider to be one of my therapists. She went to school for a few years uh, for psychology and we were talking about this kind of the situation where a lot of us, all of us, are conditioned at a very young age to normalize a lot of situations, normalize a lot of habits and patterns that we see as children. And it was a very interesting thing to talk about because she was also able to give me a perspective that I wouldn't have because I am a gay, a gay white male in a society that definitely caters to us. And because she is a black woman, she's able to give me a separate perspective that I necessarily wouldn't get from anyone else, especially for myself. And when we were talking about this stuff, we were talking about how a lot of this conditioning, a lot of this normalizing bleeds into society and how society allows racism, sexism, ableism, and all that stuff kind of be normalized, that we just kind of sweep under the rug. A lot of white people sweep under the rug because it doesn't affect us. A perfect example of this is how women are silenced in the beauty community, especially when they want to speak their mind and when they have something to say or when they want to express themselves. It's almost like they're scrutinized, they're tore down. But when someone like me or another boy in makeup or a boy in general wants to speak their mind or, or, or they have something to express or say, it's almost like, it's almost like we're just sassy or we're just, <laughs> we're expressing ourselves or we're just being honest and all that stuff. And even worse, when a black woman does it, she's labeled as angry, an angry black woman. And that's fucked up. And I think all of this is stemming from, or a lot of this, or if, yeah, all of this is stemming from normalizations, conditioning, and just ignoring it. We, we're, we're comfortable with these kind of labels, these setup, th these, these societal norms. We're comfortable with it. In a situation I was in where my privilege jumped out was recently about a month, a month or two ago. Uh, and I'm not going to say this person's name only because we all know who it is. We all know who it is. But this was also a situation where I went against myself and kind of fell into patterns that are unhealthy. So a reasoning behind kind of going to this person's house was I've been doing a lot of growth as a person and when I've been acting out a lot on social media, uh, causing attention, causing drama, always creating a scene which also stems from childhood trauma, um, a sense of just being neglected and wanting to be heard. Uh, I've heard a lot of people on the way. And I wanted to rebuild relationships with people that I've kind of broken relationships with. And I wanted to gain closure with a lot of people. Um, and especially the first person that ever had some sort of huge personal situation with uh, behind the scenes. And 
I just wanted to get closure on it, you know? And I wanted to, I guess, soothe the situation in my mind. But in reality, it was me going against myself. So when I went to this person's house, you know, we were talking about all that stuff, of course. We were mentioning all that stuff. And, you know, we had a very great conversation about our personal issues and we got past it. But when I brought up the subject of racism, because I also wanted to go there because in my heart, I felt like this person was a changed person. But in reality, white privilege and racism can't be unlearned overnight, can't be undone overnight. And it can't be undone by a drop of a hat, by one apology video. It needs to be a conscious effort on a person's behalf. And I didn't realize that. And I didn't realize that because of my privilege. Because everyone else knew it. But I let privilege jump out. And when I was talking about him, about racism, I just wanted to know his stance on everything. You know, I know, I know he's made a video about it, but I wanted to hear it from him, from the person who was in all this drama. I just wanted to know, how do you, like, what's your stance on it? And we had a conversation about it for a while, and eventually it led into him saying basically, well, we all, we've all said the N-word. And he didn't just say the N-word. He said the N-word with an A at the end, but still just as racist. And then his hairstylist, the people that were bleaching his hair and stuff like that, they were like, well, yeah, on the way here, I, I, I was driving here and I said, you're a stupid B word, a racist slur against Mexican Mexicans. And I was like, when I was in that situation, I was like, don't say that. Why'd you say that? And they apologized, of course, but where I fucked up was instead of leaving that situation immediately when that was obviously a very racially charged situation, I stayed. And I didn't step away from it. And I stayed for about an hour, you know, still very uncomfortable about the situation. After I left, I came back and I hang I hung out with friends and I, I kind of talked to them about the situation. I was like, he said it. He said it in front of my face. And it wasn't just him who said something. It was the people he surrounded himself with who also said racially charged stuff. And I just, I, I couldn't process it. And I almost didn't allow myself to process it all the way because of my privilege. And another big thing, another big reason why I didn't speak out when I, when I should have spoke out was because I was scared. When I didn't, because I could have completely cut him off, but it scared me. It scared me to my, for some reason, I let his power scare me because I could have cut him off. I could have, I could have completely detached myself from him, but I was like, I don't want him to dislike me because now I'm fucking scared of this man. And that was also another situation where my privilege jumped out because I guarantee you if a person of color was in my shoes in that moment, they would have checked him. Because I don't think we fully realize the context that goes behind the word. That word. The, the evil. It's not just evil. It's evil, evil. I don't think we fully grasp the depth. And I'm talking to white people. I don't think we fully grasp how evil and dark that word means. 
And it was very fucked up for me to ignore it, enable it. So when I got back from that and I asked friends for kind of guidance and clarity in the situation, you know, and that's also like doing that, that was me being very codependent because I think deep down I knew exactly what I should have done, but I was kind of living my life in fear and ignoring the, the, the truth that was there that everything I knew was true, that everything we've all said is true, and that we're all enabling it and letting it be and letting it exist. And he's not the only person in this community. And it's not just in this community, it's everywhere. And we just let it happen. We ignore it. And we let people of color kind of, especially black women and black men, we let them kind of fend for themselves. And it's evil. (laughs) Like, I don't think we truly get how evil it is, how dark it is. And the reason why this word is evil is because the mindset it takes to even say the word. And I I honestly don't think I would have ever known the full context and the full meaning behind this word if I hadn't talked to my friend who was a black woman. You know, that word can fucking kill people. That, That word can fucking kill. That word enables people to feel like they can belittle and dehumanize a whole group of people where a man can call a black woman a racially charged name a fucking gorilla and laugh about it and it's 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 like, we don't get it. And it's going to take a long fucking time for people to really fucking get it. All these other white influencers, all these other influencers, when we saw a man get exposed for calling a black woman a gorilla, including myself, including... Not just everyone, not just every other influencer, but including myself, where we just turned a blind fucking eye to it, And call it fake? Calling it old T? He still fucking said it. We have to really understand how this word can allow people to justify hate crimes, violence towards black people, Like, we, we really need to understand the fact that when someone says this word freely in their everyday life, it, it, it enables it. it. It allows it to be the evil that it is. When someone is called an N-word, it takes away from their humanity. It dehumanizes them. I don't think we understand where this word comes from, how it was used to dehumanize black people, to make them feel less than, to make them feel like they aren't worth anything, that they are at the bottom of the barrel. And how to this day, even after Black people were able to reclaim the word for their own survival. White people still use it in a term to degrade them. And the use of it 
almost gives the okay, almost justifies, or does justify, hate crimes and killings and Nazism and all this other shit that we see in the news to this day. Police brutality. That word has not lost any sort of evil that has been behind that word. Just because we hear it in rap music or we hear it in music every single day or everyone else says it, it still has that meaning behind it. So when we allow someone to have this power and get away with saying this word 10 years ago or now, we're enabling so many other people to say it. We're normalizing the word. And that's when white privilege really jumps out. We're normalizing that mindset, that thought process. And that goes, that that just goes into when, when we see someone call a successful black woman a gorilla when we see someone dehumanize a successful black woman because they don't like her. And we just turn a blind eye to it. When top influencers, when top white influencers just act like it doesn't exist, and this is including myself, because I fucked up too. We are normalizing that mindset. And that's fucked up. I want to apologize to you, Jackie, for not, for being silent and for not realizing the full context behind that insult and behind that word that he called you. And I want to apologize to people of color for remaining silent on issues recently and not using my privilege or using my platform to help you. And I can't call myself an ally if I can't call myself out on my own problematic behavior. And I encourage every non-person of color beauty influencer who is in this community, who has a platform or no platform, when you see a person of color being mistreated, bullied by brands from institutionalized racism, from piece of shit individuals, to speak up. And I want to wrap this part up by saying if you want to be an ally, if you're going to say you're an ally, if you're going to say you care about people of color, about black women and black men and everyone under the sun being mistreated by racism, then you need to be an ally behind closed doors and be an ally in public and use your platforms that you have. If not, then don't use the label ally to make yourself feel better about your own prejudice and racism within yourself that you don't want to face, period. Now, I just want to wrap this up, this video up by saying this isn't an attack on anyone. That this is a video for me to learn my lesson, to right my wrongs, and to also call to action. If we want to see this change that we make all these videos about, we make all these videos about, oh, how I can't believe Tarte Cosmetics had a horrible shade range. I can't believe this per this brand did this. I can't believe this brand did this. Then we need to be woke in all aspects of the form. We need to, we need to educate ourselves in all aspects. That includes me as well.
Because I can't sit up here and be like, oh, how dare Tar Cosmetics only have two shades for black people? But then also not be fully educated on that. And what, what that enables. So I call to action. I want everyone that sees this video to fully educate themselves like I'm trying to do and understand what this actually is doing to innocent people, to the minds of innocent people and understand what we're enabling. And that's all I have to say on that. Don't allow your white privilege to give you an excuse to ignore blatant racism that's happening right in front of your face.